Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And I'm Henry. And I'm Andy. I'm from the 25th Southampton Sea South Groups. And we are on Bramble Bank in the middle of the Solent. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the most ridiculous thing we have ever done for this bench. And it's down to these folks. Thank you so much. We should also get some introductions from the people at the back here, because we, we have a second scout group as well. Where are you guys from? We're here. I'm Doc, and I'm from the 13th Southampton Sea Scouts. I'm Starfish, and I'm also from the 13th. And you guys? I'm James, I'm from Enterprise Explorers. I'm Mihai, and I'm from Enterprise Explorers. And I'm Martin from the 25th Scouts. Hey! <laughs> so, Matt, you, I mean, you got the first email same as I did. How did we end up here? We got an email from this lovely gentleman here <laughs> <laughs> explaining that there was a bit of sun that appears in the middle of the Solent and asking if we wanted to go and visit it. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of sun that appears how often? Um, it probably appears at every low tide, certainly if the spring low tides, so that's every two weeks. Um, but probably three or four times a year it gets low enough that you can actually be here for about 10, 15 minutes. And they uh, play cricket on here every so often as well. Yeah, we couldn't make it here for the cricket, so we figured if you guys can bring us out here. And they found a bench. <laughs> <laughs> the bench was not on here. I should point that out. We have brought our own bench with us. Um, sh can we go for a tour around Ram Ramble Bank with you guys then? Just yeah. to show off all the sights. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want to explain what... So this is a sandbar that ships have to avoid, right? Yeah, so right in the middle of the Solent is Bramble Bank. And that this is, obviously you can see it now at low tide. But we've got probably about five metres of tide here. So in about six hours time, the water level will be up, up there, um, which is why it's quite dangerous because you can't see it. And it's, uh, one thing I'd like to point out is I'm currently sinking, <laughs> which is more proof that this was underwater a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> and there's no, there's no sign of this, so you can't see this approaching or anything. No, we, we just have to sit and wait nearby. <laughs> so we were, um, oh hang on, I, I've got to turn this into a, into a selfie stick, there we go, you take it, all yours. Um, so I was going to say that getting here, like we've had to travel how, how far, a couple of miles? It's about seven miles from Southampton, seven nautical miles, so probably about eight and nine real miles. And you guys are Sea Scouts, so you know how to get here? Yep. What are Sea Scouts? Because um, I realise the answer is probably Scouts on the Sea. Yeah, we, we, we do do all the normal scouting activities, so all the fire, all the bush cover, but we've also got on the water, mostly in the summertime when we actually have lights after uh, in the evenings, and yeah, we, we have fun on boats. And, and on Saturday, <laughs> just literally running off into the distance. And this this was the one day. Let me, uh, let me let's 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 sit down again now. Now we've, now we've done the tour of the boats that are over there, because it's getting bigger right now. This this whole place is is getting much bigger as we sit here. How long have we got? Um, so low tide is probably in about five minutes. Um, we've been here probably ten. So you've got another. So I'd say twenty minutes here before we get washed away. So if I was standing here at high tide, yeah. How far underwater would I be? Okay, so assuming the top of your head is two meters. It's above, about that, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the low tide is 0.6. Uh, so it'd be a good three, maybe four meters above your head at high Whoa! tide. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's all the way up there. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you can tell I've not got any kind of nautical background because I don't understand. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about how we got here, because that was a lot of fun. Um, we, we, so Matt and I took the train down today, um, wondering about the weather. I know you said you said there were going to be heavy swells here, and we've been okay. So yeah, the forecast um, was supposed to be a bit windier than we've got at the moment, um, but we've actually quite lucked out. It's a westerly, so most of the land behind us is actually protecting us from the swells. Uh, so it actually turned out to be quite a smooth crossing. Um, so yeah, we, we got here, you, you picked us up. Uh, in, in the car at the station, and then we get to the edge of the water, and you're loading boats in. Thank you very much for letting us both have a go at driving these. <laughs> Is driving the right word? Piloting? I think, you can, I think you can drive a powerboat. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I, I can recommend it. That. I did not expect that. But um... oh, I was planning on asking straight away. <laughs> and and was... You know what I did as soon as we got <laughs> in? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about navigation on the way here, because yeah. you were telling to steer certain ways past green and red stuff. What, on the way here, we had to pass various things. How, how do you know where this sandbar was magically going to appear, magically going to um, appear? <laughs> so I looked at the chart, um, and 
down Southampton water, down the middle of it, there's, uh, there's a shipping lane because Southampton's quite a busy port and we get some fairly big boats. And they actually have to um, dig out and dredge that shipping lane so it's deep enough for them. Oh. So I was using that as a kind of road. Um, so we were going down the uh, starboard marks, which are the green ones. Uh, and we were just staying just outside the shipping lane. That's why I was sort of saying just keep on one side. But it's basically follow those down until we get to the Solent, and it was just head across. <laughs> and uh, we aimed for there's a pile called Bramble Pile, which um, is over there. Which is which is just the I, I don't know if it's going to show up on this camera, but it's it's a stick in the water there with, with a weather station on it. So there is a, there is a wind uh, and tide gauge on there, um, and that's what we were aiming for. And we just had to wait. Uh, for the uh, bramble to appear. So the uh, big ships that come across stay within two uh, yep. buoys on either side. Yeah, so, so it's, just a, it's just like a road. And we them. were keeping out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so we also got to play about a bit with some turns, which... <laughs> you go up really high on one side and the other side goes really low. It's great fun being low down. <laughs> oh. So what do you guys get up to normally when you're not inviting people with a camera that a, a tripod that is steadily sinking into what appears to be quicksand? Yeah, Henry, what do you normally do? Uh, we, we normally, uh, in the summer, when, in the months when we have more light, we normally go out in the water most weeks. Uh, it's normally with um, uh, either kayaks or uh, sailing boats, but we do take the power boats out. But we mostly use them as a um, safety boat in case anything happens. And then in the winter months, we end up being normal scouts again instead of sea scouts <laughs> and do all the, do stuff like map reading. Some, but we do nautical charts because we're sea scouts as well and, and stuff like that, yeah. I suppose it gets too dark to do anything at any yeah. time of day, never mind going out on sea <laughs> yeah. in the winter. So, yeah, yeah we, are, we are starting to lose the light here, but this was literally the only time looking at the calendar this year that, yeah. th this year, that Bramble Bank was going to be visible in anything approaching daylight. So and we're, we're lucky we've nice. had the weather, we've got the that. sunset. We were, it was so overcast earlier, we were thinking <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see the sunset and would just be some kind of dark grey, but it looks lovely. So we have, we've covered the ride. We've covered navigation. We've covered the sandbank. We haven't covered the cricket. <laughs> Could you explain that? Because you're around, you live around here. Um, so there are two yacht clubs. Um, there's the cow. Uh, I think they're called the Island Sailing Club. And um, forgive me, I'll get this wrong. Because that's the Isle of Wight. That's the Isle of Wight, and they're based in cows. Oh, I've never seen the Isle of Wight before. <laughs> now you <laughs> let me have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't consider that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, it's them versus um, the Royal Southern Yacht Club, and they're based on the Hamble, which we pass that halfway down Southampton Water. So they stand on the shore of each other and go <laughs> across the water. <laughs> no, it's cricket, so it's nice and friendly. Guys. We should have brought a cricket bat. Out of everything, we should have brought a cricket bat. Um, and so every so often they play a game and they pre-arrange who wins, so they take it in turn who wins, because they don't quite get a full... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I'm surprised you can even bowl on here because there is a lot of water. No, yeah, it's, it's very lumpy. So I think it's been going about 50 years. Now, Bramble Bank is shrinking. It's certainly shrunk, I think, about a metre in the last 10 years. Uh, what, downwards? Yeah, and, oh, and okay. along as the sort of tide moves. So I think when it sort of started 50 years ago, it, it was probably a lot more of a bank for them to play cricket on. Because I suppose this all flows, because it's all underwater and things flow when they're in water. And if you've got dredging going along, the stuff that moved over there is not going to come back because it's been taken away by another boat. And the, um, because there is five metres of water that's got to sort of come here within six hours, the um, currents are quite Ooh, strong. That would be fast, I was going to yeah. say, we, when we were, because uh, we were moving about 30, 40, uh, no, about 30 knots earlier, wasn't yeah. it? But just pulling out when the tide is really moving, it... Oh, there was a lot of speed going on. If we if we hadn't anchored, we would have been moving quite fast, I guess. Yeah, and you also saw when we were launching the boats that we were just going sideways yeah. straight off the setway. So that is the, the tide leaving the river and uh, heading out. So how often do you guys come here? How, how, when was the last time you were on Bramble Bank? I've never been Oh wow! Okay. myself. The first because... time in the group was actually uh, in the summer, uh, probably shortly uh, around when I emailed you. Yeah. Uh, it was the 24th of August, I think. Yeah, so it was the first time we tried it. Um, <laughs> and it worked out so well, you thought, hey, why don't they come along too? <laughs> <laughs> and bring a bench. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I think that's it. We have to say thank you so much. Yeah, it's been and to the whole pleasure. scout crew for letting us come out here and providing the means and hopefully for taking us back. <laughs> <laughs> we, you had to build a risk assessment for this, didn't yeah. you? It was, you? You said it was the first... Uh, first five I've ever seen on a risk assessment. So there's a risk of death. <laughs> yeah, so risk assessment, do you ever have to do one? It, it's, it's from one minor minor risk, you might get, a, might get a little bit of a bruise, to five risk of death. And if there's a five on there, the mitigation you've got for it had better be pretty strong. Yeah, it does need to be... Uh, uh, so that's the severity. Yeah. You've got the likelihood, so it can only yeah. really be accompanied by a one. Yes. Yeah, the likelihood of that is a one, so yes, we could die, but the <laughs> chances of us dying with all of this we protective would, equipment... We would and... have to be abandoned without a life jacket and no mobile phone. I've got phone service, by the way, which I guess I shouldn't well, be Well, yes, we can about, see because... the UK landmass and the Isle of Wight. Yeah. I... Isn't the Isn't Isle of Wight in the UK? Part of Yes, it is. I said it's, the UK's landmass. I meant Great Britain. So you mean Great Britain. You mean Great Britain. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing us here. Seeing as you've never been before, we're going to let you have a chance to wander around. Yeah, I'm literally going to wander around with this camera for a bit. <laughs> and hopefully, seeing as Tom is the one here with nothing to keep him dry, at some point he's going to get really wet because that is going to be funny. I have, I have boots on! <laughs> <laughs> we've all got waterproof stuff or stuff that will dry quickly. You've got jeans. <laughs> thank you, folks. <laughs> Is now traditionally ready? we uh, we try and make ourselves laugh at the start of a thing. So, but at this point, I'd just like to remember yelling "power on" about three seconds too late, and you nearly. <laughs> <laughs>